Hey guys, Joshua Peterson, Peterson Electric here. Um, it is May, no, June 2nd of 2021. Um, this is about the detached garage. If you're looking for that video, just try to look at the same uh, white and green barn, if you will, the garage, detached garage. Here's how it turned out. If you saw my other videos, you saw that the PVC came in underground here and it came up, left the spare circuit in there so he can later go through that wall and wire up that shed right there. This right here is your outside, outside outlet that you have to have. Here's a switch for this outside light. We've got a plug up there just in case we want to have a power extension cord, a reel. This is going to be a direct drive garage door. So he's going to have to have a plug here. This right here is your light you're required to have outside. You can either have it a photo eye switch or put it on test mode or have a switch for it. The other one is right here. You have to have a light walking in here. It does not have to be three-way between here. This is not a dwelling unit. The rest of this, I ended up putting in circuit 10, 10, 10 with the GFI protecting it. Very similar to a bathroom. Eight, eight, eight GFI all to here. Circuit six is my lighting. You do have to protect all of your GFI or your receptacles in the ceiling without a GFI apply, trip, reset. Kills all the lights all the way through, okay? Outside here, same thing. I like to put a offset nipple with a rigid coupling and a flex connector that we did not get connected. And then it pops out here to an outlet right here. SBWR rated in GFI'd. Up here's my other light for a motion test. And then over here we have another circuit, circuit nine. Okay, so I have five 20 amp circuits, single pole 120 volt, and I have one 15 amp. I also have a two pole GFCI circuit here. This is a space heater. Okay, that's got a remote. You do have to have a disconnect within sight and it has to be geofied at 240 volt now as of this year. We also have a welder plug at 50 amp and that has to be GFCI'd as well. And we also have our wire that we push through our concrete down there. So looking around, is there a request by code of how many outlets to have in a garage? Sure there is. Did we overdo it for him? Yes, we did. He wanted us to put as many as possible for his location at his benches, okay? This is definitely more of a shop. He is possibly doing some calving in the winter. You're not allowed to have hay in here. We did not do compression set fittings. We only did set screw. There are not bell box covers or bell boxes that are seal tight. So you cannot have any type of agriculture in here. And we made sure the customer knew that. I am not ripping all this out. We have a separate conduit here in case you want some cameras. It is a, set, a different classification. It's a class two wire, it cannot be in the same conduit. Here's our grounding for our Brady clamp for the metal inner system bonding bridge bar. Our two ground rods already showed you this, and that went down and grounded your rebar underneath there too. Coming out here, 90 amp max is what we can do for our wire that we pulled in. Surge protective device, welder, space heater, both GFI'd, and all the others. We could have done GFI breakers, but it's cheaper for us just to put the receptacles. But as you can see, does this panel look full? It is possibly because this is not a split bus bar where you can do twins and quads, where it has the tandem action. But we can pull out this SPD and put one under here and save two spots if we had to. There's really not much more he's going to need. We did upsize for our wire. It is size two sizes higher as it goes through the house especially. Because on this side, you have to pay attention that it's a welder and a heater. And I bet you both of those are going in the wintertime. We 
here is a 5kW, so it only pulls about 20 amps. This is our connection that went through the house and our Polar's connectors to connect from the ground. We did go 30 inches deep to 24, somewhere in that vicinity. And it is in a conduit the whole way at a two inch PVC schedule 40 and 80. Does have its slip conduits as well. And this is your spare for your camera. As my inspector said, if a low voltage guy wants to come in and push for cameras, for the fact that he might have calving going on, keep an eye on him. So we did pop in an extra three quarter inch race grade. Um, yeah, so that's the garage. It's probably about 3,000 square foot. Uh, we were definitely here quite a few hours, two days to get the trench in. Uh, and look at that already, he seeded it for me. I do like putting in also a spare PVC conduit. Inspector can shove his tape down. He wanted to see it before it was buried, but there was an old telephone line that was cut, so we know where that telephone line is. If he needs to fix it, he says they don't use it and it's obsolete. But it also shows this is where our trench is and our direct bury tape is underneath this. And look how great this looks already seeding that within 10 days. Besides the fact we had a ton of rain. Anyways, guys, thanks for joining us and um, have a good one.